In this video, I'm going to show you how to use breaks within your document. Breaks are very powerful tools for formatting and to make sure that important information shows up within the right place within your document. A page break will make sure that you don't have, for instance, an important chapter heading that shows up at the bottom of your page. And it can also help you keep pages that you don't want certain content on clear. So let me show you what I'm talking about. In order to see breaks within your documents, you need to activate the pull crow or the paragraph sign. If you don't know how to do this, then I would suggest you go back to the video that shows you how to make use of the pull crow. The paragraph sign basically helps you to see the guts of your document in terms of its formatting. Without the pull crow, you will not be able to see breaks within your document. So let's say that within my document, I want the table of contents to start on the second page and I want the title page to be a standalone page. What a lot of people do is they will insert their cursor where they want to split information and then just click enter. The problem with this approach is that if you include information in the middle of all these paragraphs which you've created, then the content on the next page, as you can see my page two, is going to move around. So to avoid this, you can rather use a page break, which means that regardless of how much information I include on my first page, the content on my second page won't move around. So let me remove this and show you how to use it. So if I want to split the title page from the page that has the table of contents, I'm going to go to insert and then click on page break. So here you can see that even if I insert more information on my title page, the content on my second page does not move around. Very important to note here is that you'll see that there's a paragraph before my table of contents. I don't want that there, so I can delete it. That way my table of contents starts at the top of the page. If I want my list of tables to start at the beginning of the following page, I can include a page break there as well. Let's say I want my list of figures on a separate page, I can include another page break. And you can do this for the beginning of each chapter within your document as well. So now you can see that each one of my headings start on their own page. And my table of contents starts on its own page, my list of tables starts on its own page, and my list of figures starts on its own page. If I turn off the pull crow sign, you will not be able to see where my page breaks are, which is exactly how you want your document to look. However, a page break is not the only type of break that is available to use within your document. There's also something called a section break. Section breaks are found in the layout tab, but before I go there, I'm just going to enable my paragraph mark again. Here you will see a break section that has a few more options. So the page break is what we just use to insert a normal page break. But you can also insert a section break. Section breaks are really useful if you want to use different formatting options for different parts of your document. So let's say that you, for instance, want to, and a lot of people do this, use Roman numerals for the preamble of your document, say the table of contents, the list of tables, and the list of figures, and your abstract. But when chapter one starts, you want to start numbering using Arabic numerals section breaks become really useful and I'm going to show you how to do that in a subsequent video. A section break you insert in exactly the same way you insert a page break. So I for instance want to split my document between the main body of the document and the preamble of the document. So the preamble of the document will be my title page, my table of contents, my list of tables and my list of figures. But the main body of my document, I want to start at heading one on this page five. I can either remove this page break and insert a section break instead, or I could just insert a section break next to this page break, which is exactly what I'm going to do now. So if I go to breaks, you'll see that there are various options here. The first two options, for instance, 
allows you to use the section break as a page break and a section break in one. So basically you can tell Word to insert a section break and then start the next section on a new page, which is what a page break does. Or you can tell Word, you know what, I want a section break in this area, but I don't want the next section to start on a new page. I want it to start on the same page where I am now. I'm just going to click on the next page option. You'll see here that nothing has changed. I just have a section break next to my page break, which means that my document is now divided into two sections with the first section ending on page four and the second section um, starting on page five. And again, if I disable the paragraph mark, you won't be able to see those breaks.